Hey class, so this week we're talking about George Marsden and the outrageous idea of Christian scholarship, as well as the book Fundamentalist You. And so I wanted to start with the introduction, which I have on my screen here. This is um, George Marsden's book. Um, and I have found that in doing book reviews, the introductions um, and preface are just invaluable information. They usually explain the thesis and you guys probably know all that. So um, anyway, so George Marsden, and explains in here that um, there's a problem in American higher education um, that we need to integrate faith and learning. However, he is trying to explain what he thinks that should look like practically in such a diverse culture that we live in now. And so he sets out uh, the purpose of this book, which is to provide some positive guidelines for what the author has in mind when he urges that Christian perspectives and the perspective of other religious groups be accepted as legitimate in the mainstream academy. And so um, yesterday... I was um, working on something for the history club that I'm going to be taking over at our school. And so I had called the public school um, a history teacher who also runs a history club and asked him some questions. And he was telling me about a project that his club did for their school where they decorated every door of every classroom in the school and they did it to celebrate diversity. And so every door had a different religion, a different ethnicity, a different gender, um, you know, basically the whole race, class, gender um, mantra that we've been dealing with um, through some of these last lectures. And I think this is really where our modern education is at right now um, in the secular realm, I think, and even in the Christian realm in some schools, but definitely in the secular realm. And I agree with what Marsden says in a lot of his book, but then I also disagree because I feel like it creates sort of a compromising Christianity in a lot of ways. And I really saw that in chapter three, which I pulled up right here. Um, and the part about Stanley Fish was really interesting to me. Um, he said that Stanley Fish is the, um, I'm not good with this, infant terrible or something, um, which basically means he's an embarrassment to postmodernist. Um, and so it provides, um, he provides a provocative critique where he basically says that, um, Christians down here at the end, if they are serious about their faith, should not compromise with liberalism, which was built on antithetical principles. And I think I, I definitely agree with that. I think that, you know, it's one thing to say that we have to accept all cultures and um, diversity. And I, I do think that is true, actually. I think that having um, different ethnicities and different cultures and, um, you know, putting those on the door of your school or whatever, I think that's a great thing to do because we do have a lot of diversity. Um, America was a nation that was founded on Protestantism, but it's not anymore. And so we, we do have to embrace where we're at today. However, there are some ideologies that have just gone too far. And I was gonna show you guys in our county, um, they now in our public high schools have diversity week. And this was back in 2020, um, but they just did another one. So you can see the date on here, diversity awareness week. And so you've got uh, Monday is racism canceled. Um, Tuesday, respect the rainbow. Wednesday, wear blue and proud to be you. Um, shine a light on mental health Thursday and woke about world religions Friday. So you can see kind of the direction that the public schools and, and this is going on in modern academia as well in different ways um, that Christians are expected to accept certain things like the tie dye respect the rainbow. Um, you know, the Bible tells us not to respect that. And so I think, um, and this is what I said in my quiz. So this is my quiz from the other day. Um, I said that uh, Stanley Fish um, critiqued Marsden's work, and he argued that Christians who are serious about their faith should not compromise with liberalism, bases his ideas on thinkers like Augustine and John Milton, and Fish states that Christians should not want to enter the marketplace of ideas, rather they should want to shut it down. Um, and I do, I do agree with that. I don't think, you know, we know who owns this world and we can't shut it down, but I don't think that we're supposed to be yoked with that sort of thing that closely either. Um, 
And so I, at the end of my quiz answer, I quoted James 4.4, um, because I think in the 1920s, 30s, and 50s, like I said here, um, right and wrong were very parallel with each other. They were close. And as the further we go in time, the more they go kind of like this. And the problem with that is you just can't bridge the divide because it's too wide now. And so um, I think that Marsden's arguments could have held up back even even in the 60s and 70s um but not today they just don't hold up today because we're too far to the left now um and so that that being said i wouldn't i wouldn't say his book was all bad um i think he certainly made some great points and i think that christians um definitely have to um you know we we have to use empirical data and we have to base things on concrete evidence and we can't be i mean you get too spiritual and that's not what um it's not that's not what education is about at least in america um you know we're trying to figure out what we can know concretely and there is a value to that as well so um so you know his book had good and bad points but that would be my my criticism. So anyway, I'm sure my time is probably way up. Um, thank you for this class. I've enjoyed getting to know you guys, and I hope that I will see you guys in future courses. Uh, have a wonderful summer.